Okay, the other thing you can do with this flex is like in um, Pro Tools Beat Detective, you can phase lock a whole load of tracks and then do your flex editing, in the case of Logic Flex it's called, um, across multiple tracks, everything is phase locked, sample synced. And I'll explain for beginners the reason for that. Here's four basic drum tracks, kick, snare, two overheads. Now, for example, this is a snare hit right there, okay? And of course it's also on the overheads here and here, and even the kick drum is picking it up. So if I moved that snare back a little bit, the two overheads would be, which have also got the snare hit on, would be out of sync with this snare hit on the actual snare track here. Never mind all the cymbal stuff being out and everything like that. So the point is you can lock all the tracks together so that when you move the audio, even a sample, it moves it across all the other tracks and you get phase locked audio and everything sounds okay. So it's pretty much like the Pro Tools um, Beat Detective for setting it all up. The first thing to remember is that before you even start, all your regions that you're going to be using as part of these grouped tracks must begin at exactly the same point so make sure that's all done first otherwise logic throws an error okay now first we've got to put all these tracks into a group and you can do it individually just select the track and down here you can put it into a group here using the group box on the channel strip but it, if you're putting a whole load of them in and there's only four here but a real drum recording would probably have a lot more so you go into the mixer there's my kick drum, you just drag across from it like that using the arrow tool and it will encapsulate as many channel strips as you like so assuming they're all drums and in fact those are drums up to there but there's nothing on them so I'm only using these four. Okay so they're all selected and then you just go to the group box for any one of them, that's the grey box here and you just put them into group one. Then you've got to check your group settings and make sure that this editing selection is ticked and phase locked audio must also be ticked. Now what happens then is one or more of these cue buttons will come on, probably all of them will come on for you and these light grey vertical transient markers will become like these solid flex type markers. Right? Now oddly here's another bug only one region in the group has been selected so you've got to deselect and reselect and then it selects all of them. There are all sorts of little bugs like that where it doesn't quite pick things up that it should. Okay so the idea of it is this. This. There's a snare hit right there. Okay. Right there is a snare hit. Let me move that out of the way. So if I want to move this snare forwards everything is now phase locked. If you want to you can just make as many of the tracks your Q reference here, look Q reference, this is the track parameter box here, as you like. So you know kick and snare usually gives you most of your timing say. But you can allow them all to contribute. But quite how in the case of that for example, which how logic decides which of the flex markers to use as soon as I bring in this overhead flex marker, you can see it's moving that kick drum flex marker back a bit. Okay, So I don't know how it decides that, but you can make as many of them a reference as you like, and it should, up to a point, put the flex markers from all the regions across the regions. Okay, So I'm just going to make kick and snare as my two cue references. So if I go to this snare here and I now move it, I've got two ways of doing it, and I'll zoom in to show you that. Hang on. Right, that's the snare, and there's a slight delay because I'm having to use this special driver for capturing the audio. Okay, look, if I put the mouse over this vertical transient marker at the top of the region, I get this single golf tee type icon with a shoulder each side. And if I then, and I can do this on any of the tracks, it doesn't have to be the snare one, but I will. And when I left click and hold down, it will put a handle marker across every track that's phase locked and then if I move the snare 
it's moving everything in phase but you'll notice look it's pushing everything oops too far it's pushing everything to the left shorter and if I let go these are surrounded in green because they've been made shorter they've been time stretched shorter and this has been stretched longer so it's orange okay, that's one way of doing it another way of doing it is if you bring the mouse down to the middle of the region you get a triple golf tee like that and what that is doing is putting in a handle marker um, flex marker on the transient marker that I'm over plus the one to the left and right like that and that then isolates that one hit so I can drag it forward or back as much as I like and it's only affecting the audio between the two outer transient markers it doesn't affect any of this audio here or any of this audio here okay so that's another way you can do it and finally which I think is the best of all is you can turn off master flex so that all that flex overlay like with track automation has disappeared but if you look at the regions now they're in a group so if I select one all of them are selected but you can as I showed you in the previous video I think you can take flex on and off for individual regions so even though master flex is turned off flex is still on for all these regions so look I can then grab my flex tool and when master flex is off it defaults to always give you the three golf tees so I can go in even though master flex is off but as long as flex is on for the region and in the case of these they're all phase locked so that gets retained as long as you keep them in that group I could just go to this hit here and move it forward and it isolates it with the triple golf tee effect so you can clearly see if I mouse over I get the triple golf tees like that right? Yeah. and then I can just drag that forward and it's doing exactly the same thing as when flex visible is switched on but without the ugly clutter of all those horrible vertical markers and stuff isn't that cool and of course I can put in an additional flex marker by putting my mouse over any position where there isn't a flex marker if I put my mouse over somewhere where there is an invisible flex marker because master flex is turned off I'd get the golf tee effect but if I put it here I get a different icon with a shoulder each side and I can actually draw in a flex marker and even though it's invisible you can see look it's affecting the audio and if I then put flex back on master flex that is come on there's the extra little transient marker I put in between those two ones there you see so I'll knock that out now I don't want it anymore there you go I'll just turn my master flex off and isn't that great that bit like that oh, that is the best of all as long as flex is on for regions once the wave's been analyzed and has its transient markers assigned flex works like that cool very cool Okay, that's something else Flex can do.